people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I am your host Shivangi Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's first talk about India's evolving relationship with Israel. As the deadly Hamas attack on Israel completed the period of six months, the former Israeli ambassador to India praised New Delhi for standing by Israel, highlighting the strategic alliance of the two countries. Meanwhile, a Hamas attack survivor conveyed appreciation towards India and its people for their steadfast support during a challenging period. Indian students studying in Israel have also expressed gratitude towards the Indian Embassy and authorities in New Delhi for ensuring their safe return in the wake of the October 7 attack. A report. On October 7, 2023, Hamas terrorists waged the deadly attack on Israel, slaughtering people and taking hundreds of innocent civilians hostages. Shortly after the attack, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi posted on X that he was deeply shocked, adding, We stand in solidarity with Israel at this difficult hour. Three days later, PM Modi received a call from Israeli counterpart Benjamin Netanyahu, who updated him on the situation. Daniel Karman, the former Israeli ambassador to India, recently praised the Indian government for standing by Israel following horrifying terror attacks by Hamas, stating that the two countries' strategic alliance is well known. Daniel said that the ties between India and Israel are very strong and will continue. India knows a thing or two about terrorism and about how to confront terrorism. Uh, the wonderful relations, the strategic relations between India and Israel uh, is a well-known fact and it was only natural and very much appreciated that the government of India has uh, set out a statement, a very quick one, uh, of support to its strategic partner uh, Israel and these relations which are uh, very strong and uh, uh, varied relations will continue, I'm sure about that. As the Hamas attack completed six months, a survivor of the horror, Moran, expressed gratitude to India and its people for their unwavering support through a difficult time. While acknowledging India's contribution to Israel's global voice amplification, Moran said that the Indian people are providing for all of our needs. I see the Indian support that started much before, years before the October 7th and uh, after the October 7th, uh, uh, thanks for the Prime Minister Modi, uh, all over the media. And we know that India is a true friend of Israel, but I think it's not just the Indian government. Thanks to the Indian people who, had, uh, uh, who have always uh, be, uh, being and uh, continue to be a good friend of ours. and. Uh, um, I think it's just continuing from the same point. So thank you for the, for the support, for the love you're showing us. And I think uh, that you can help us. Our voice cannot be everywhere. everywhere. And we know that the Indian people are uh, uh, taking care of everything uh, we need. And thank you very much to the government, but for the people as well. After the Hamas attack, Indian government had launched Operation Ajay, an operation to help stranded and distressed Indian citizens willing to return to home from Israel. Meanwhile, the Indian students studying in Israel have also expressed gratitude towards the Indian embassy and authorities in New Delhi for ensuring their safe return in the wake of the October 7 attack. When it started, it was seven, like. There was whole confusion on that day and then things became clear. The embassy contacted us regarding the flight back, like they said they will take all of us who are want to go home. So and eventually they took us back in two, three days, like all of the people who wanted to go home, we signed up on a mail and then they took us home in three days and yeah, it was very clear and we knew what to do exactly. 
and even the tech mayon arranged uh, transport from here to the airport so it was very clear what to do you were happy with the cooperation yeah it was everything was very clear yes, so we knew yeah government. from the government uh, from the technical like from the management it was extremely clear like we were told exactly what to do so I mean, there was no confusion at all so they made things much like very smooth today when significant changes are taking place all over the world the importance of india israel relations has increased even further as in the nature of india for hundreds of years the jewish community has lived and flourished in harmonious environment in indian society without any discrimination it has made significant contributions to development journey of india let's now talk about pakistan occupied kashmir and gilgit baltistan where locals found it very challenging to manage their expenses on the occasion of eid The situation in park occupied areas are getting worse by the day. People in these regions are being forced to bear the brunt of Pakistan's economic crisis in the form of hike in taxes and shortage of essential commodities, and they see no relief in near future. A report. The international community has underestimated the socio-political and economic factors affecting the people of Pakistan's occupied Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan in the context of their occupied status and the country's inadequate infrastructure. POK and Gilgit Baltistan have been illegally occupied by Islamabad since 1947 and the residents of these regions have endured the worst of Pakistan's political and economic hardships for many years. People are complaining about unfair tax increases and unusual rise in electricity cost despite protracted blackouts and a crisis of vital services in the area that the state is fabricating. This year on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr the locals found it very difficult to manage their expenses with the available job opportunities and incomes. The situation in Pakistani occupied Gilgit Baltistan and Pakistani occupied Jammu and Kashmir are getting from bad to worse by the day. Inflation is very high, people's buying power has collapsed and it was evident over the Eid because people could not afford to buy goods for their families, they were not able to buy new clothes for their children. hundreds of thousands of families could not afford to buy even a pair of shoes for their children uh, the situation in pakistani occupied jammu kashmir is absolutely uh, abysmal the calls for fundamental rights have intensified into massive protest in gilgit baltistan and pok All political, religious and social organizations are demonstrating against load shedding and inflation and demanding basic amenities in the area. The majority of demonstrators assert that while they do not intend to escalate their protests, doing so is their only remaining option for persuading the authorities. The locals from all walks of life are supporting the public cause in Gilgit Baltistan and POK. Nobody is listening to the outcry of the common man and woman in pakistani occupied jammu and kashmir uh, the situation is worsened because over the eid people were expecting that they would be paid their salaries and their pensions but for months they have been denied their wages they have been denied their pensions there is no social security net that could guarantee a dignified life for the unemployed or even for those who are facing destitute because of the economic crisis the most depressing aspect of the tale is pakistan's assertion that the people of gilgit baltistan and pok are free and aesthetic about the development projects However, reality is that in the name of development and defense, Pakistani forces are just occupying resorts and tourist spots of POK and Gilgit Baltistan. People are demanding better educational facilities and the creation of new job opportunities as the state of education is appalling. There's a serious crisis in the education system in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. 
Despite the pressing need for better facilities, students and employees in the education sectors are being kept away from their basic rights. Amid rising inflation, teaching and administrative staff in POK are demanding their overdue salary increases. The Pakistani government has refused to listen to the legitimate demands of academic staff and students as the progress in POK does not align with Islamabad's objectives. Pakistan has transformed POK's educational institutions into sites of persecution. It views education as a threat to its illegal annexation of the areas as knowledge could help the locals understand their legal rights. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. South Korea's conservative president dealt a resounding blow on April 10 as the country's liberal opposition scored a landslide victory in a parliamentary election. The liberals were projected to fall just short of the 200 seats needed for a supermajority, but their win likely means political gridlock ahead for President Yoon Sook Yeol. Main opposition Democratic Party leader Lee Jae Myung thanked supporters and called it a great victory for our people. Lee had led a combative campaign against Yoon. He urged Yoon's party to work together with the opposition towards an economic recovery, calling it their top priority. The马习会这个东西在现在国际情势来看的话，以及他自己身为前总统来看的话。During videos circulating on social media, a local politician in Balochistan has been protesting against what he says is ongoing exploitation and oppression by the Pakistan Coast Guards. The video captured Coast Guard officials loading containers of oil into vehicles as the man delivered his impassioned speech. Activists have long alleged that Pakistan has been targeting the Baloch people through so-called military operations while it continues to exploit their natural resources. Gwadar and other Balochistani coastal areas are being turned by Pakistan into a Chinese stronghold, 
home to the greatest number of military bases and cantonments in the area. A report. The Coast Guard Baloch Dushmani pe utar hai. A fiery video has gone viral on social media showcasing a Balochistan politician lambasting the Pakistan Coast Guards for exploiting the local resources. In the video, the man identified as Hidayat Ur Rahman Baloch, a newly elected member of the Provincial Assembly representing Gwadar and the leader of Hakdo Tehreek Balochistan, is seen surrounded by onlookers as he alleges the security officials of pilfering oil and local resources from the port city. Accusing the Pakistan Coast Guard's officials of confiscating oil and petroleum from impoverished traders, Rahman said the security forces are amassing personal wealth and exacerbating traders' poverty. Pakistan Coast Guards is a maritime law enforcement agency with a mission of conducting anti-narcotics and anti-human trafficking operations, but the locals claim the agency deliberately targets them. बतौर एमपी है यहां का नुमाइंदा कह रहा हूं कि कोस्ट गार्ड बलोच दुश्मनी पे उतर आया है उनके रग और खून में बलोच दुश्मनी है रग और खून में Activists have long alleged that Pakistan has been targeting the Baloch people through so-called military operations while it continues to exploit their natural resources. The situation is not highlighted by the local media forcing them to seek intervention through global platforms. The projects like China-Pakistan Economic Corridor are systematically altering the demographic balance of affected regions, leaving indigenous groups marginalized and deprived. Gwadar and other Baluchistani coastal areas are being turned by Pakistan into a Chinese stronghold home to the greatest number of military bases and cantonments in the area. Rozana ya chars ja rahe rozana chars ja rahe hamare sahel se rozana boats mein chars ja rahe afyun ja rahe rozana ja raha hai lekin ye inko ye isme bada jahaz ye gareebon ke tel gareeb mazdooron ke tel ye lekar jate hain bar bar hum keh rahe hain hukam se keh rahe hain inke jo colonel hai unko keh rahe hain zimmedaran se keh rahe khuda ke waste zulm mat karo gareebon mein zulm mat karo khuda se daro in the pakistan's most underdeveloped area of balochistan the country's ISI has been accused of committing all kinds of atrocities including abduction, killing and torture to instill fear. The latest report by Pang, the Human Rights Department of the Baloch National Movement BNM, has revealed alarming figures. According to report in March 2024, 24 individuals were forcibly disappeared in Balochistan by Pakistani forces, two were extrajudicially killed while 21 torture victims were released. Pank reported that in Balochistan, those who advocate for the betterment of their society are consistently targeted by the Pakistani army. The Pakistani army views enforced disappearances as the only means of stifling Baloch national consciousness. This tactic has been used for the past 20 years and students and the educated class are the primary targets. Moving on, Muslims across the world offered prayers to celebrate the holy occasion of Eid al-Fitr. The festival was joyfully celebrated in Indian subcontinent with a large gathering at hundreds of mosques. An air of festivity and celebration filled the streets as people gathered in colourful attire to celebrate the festival. Take a look. Eid al-Fitr is a significant festival celebrated on the first day of Shabbal, the 10th month of the Islamic lunar calendar. This year also, Muslims across the world offered prayers to celebrate the holy occasion of Eid al-Fitr on April 10th and 11th, marking the end of the Islamic month of Ramadan. 
Muslim clergy in different countries decided the date and timings of prayers depending on the sighting of the moon. In South Asian countries also, people celebrated the festival with prayers, family visits and feasts featuring a lavish spread of traditional delicacies. The festival was joyfully celebrated in India, the world's largest democracy with a large gathering at hundreds of mosques. In Jammu, a large congregation gathered at Eidka and Makkah Masjid for prayers. ये आज ईद उल फितर का त्यौहार है वो खुशियों के साथ बनाया जा रहा है क्योंकि माह रमजान में लोग रोजे रखते हैं भूखे प्यासे अल्लाह की रजा के लिए रोजे रखते हैं अल्लाह को राजी करने के लिए ये साल में एक बारी त्यौहार आता है इन द होली सिटी ऑफ अयोध्या पीपल जॉइंट कम्युनल प्रेस शोल्डर्स टू शोल्डर्स ऑन द स्ट्रीट्स एंड इनसाइड मॉस्क्स an air of festivity and celebration filled the streets as people gathered in colorful attire to celebrate the festival. Today, we have come to the Eid al-Fitr, and we have come to the Eid al-Fitr. We have come to the Eid al-Fitr, and we have come to the Eid al-Fitr. We have come to the Eid al-Fitr, and we have come to the Eid al-Fitr, and we have come to the Eid al-Fitr. Pakistan, a predominantly Muslim country where more than 90% of its 240 million population practice Islam, declared a four-day public holiday from April 9th to April 12th. According to reports, Pakistan had deployed more than 100,000 police and paramilitary forces ahead of Eid. Ramadan ka mahina Allah Taala ne hamata ki iske andar humne roze rakhe Allah ki ibadat ki. और आज ईद उल फितर की नमाज अदा करी हमें इसके अंदर अपने तमाम बहन भाइयों को गरीबों को याद रखना चाहिए कि हम उनको नहीं भूलें इन बांग्लादेश द फेस्टिविटी स्टार्टेड ऑन अप्रैल सेवन व्हेन पीपल ऑब्जर्व शब खदर और द नाइट ऑफ पावर व्हिच इज बिलीव टू बी द नाइट व्हेन कुरान वाज फर्स्ट एंड डाउन फ्रॉम हेवन पीपल लिविंग इन ढाका स्टार्टेड देयर जर्नीज अर्लियर दिस ईयर with some travelers noticing that extended holiday had put an ease to the inadequate transport system in the country. On the occasion of Eid, Muslims are encouraged to forgive and seek forgiveness. And with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.